Hello and welcome, this is Rufalmonger. And my friends, in today's Guilty Gear Strive video, we're going to be talking about the concept of option selects. Now this is a very important concept, this is in many kinds of fighting games. And long story short, whenever you do something, the option select makes sure you always get the best of multiple options. So in this video, I'm going to give you three character specific examples, but that is just that. They're examples. You can apply this to every character in the game. This is just to help you understand how this all works. And the first concept we're going to be using Axel is pretty simple. So I'm going to hit him with Crouch Heavy Slash, which is a low, by the way. And basically, if the enemy blocks it, I want to get out of dodge. So I'll be using my quarter circle backslash move to go backwards. And if it were to somehow actually hit them, Instead of just them blocking the move, then I want my combo, right? So there you go. So I want to get that. So either on block, I want to go backwards, gain space to my more preferable range for Axel. And if it connects, I want the actual hit and get the actual combo. So how do I achieve that? Because a single hit, like you can't tell. Like just to go off that, like a single hit confirm, you just have to guess. And that's not to your benefit. Because if you got the hit and you went away, then you got nothing out of it, right? Uh, so what we need here is specifically a counter hit. So Guilty Gear Strive, hey, you've seen them. You know it. Counter. The game lets you know you got that counter hit. There ain't no mystery about it. And the best part about this is this is the whole premise of our option select. It's because of this big old screen stop, like the game's slowing down when we got the counter hit, that lets all this be possible. So for this, I'm going to have our input history on here. So you can see what buttons I'm pressing. And it's really as simple as this. When you have that big old counter up on the screen, the game prioritizes the most recent inputs. Meaning, if you had, say, one special move planned in, and then you see the counter and enter a different special move, the most recent of the two will take priority. All right, so now let's just show you how this works live fire. So for this here, we are gonna have the opponent status set to counter hit random. I do not know if the enemy is going to get counter hit or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. That's just how it's going to be. So during that giant counter flash, basically, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing both special moves back to back. And the game will take the second most option, the most recent option in the counter hit. And if there is no counter hit, the game will take the first option. Okay, I knew I just threw a bunch of jargon at you. Uh, maybe it's a little easier just to see the results as they stand. So right there, no counter hit. I did both special moves. The first one here, quarter circle backslash, went off. Now let's try again. So that time, I had my counter hit, the big flash stop. I once again entered both special moves. And since I had the counter hit flash stop, it entered the second most special move. So that means I got my combo. And now let's do a bunch of these just rapid fire. All right, ran away on successful hit or block, right? As long as it's not a counter hit. That's good. I want to get that space back. All right. I got my counter hit, so I got my combo. Awesome, right? Got my counter hit again, so I get the combo. Didn't get the counter hit, so if that was a block or a regular hit, okay, I just run away, live another day, abuse my range with Axel, right? Once again, same deal. Didn't get the counter hit, so I get to run away. I got my counter hit, so I get my full combo. Got my counter hit, so I get my full combo. And this is basically how it works. So the better of the two options is always what comes out for me. I will always get my combo on counter hit. And if I don't get my combo in this situation, I'll just run away with Axel and then go back to abusing my range. So it's as simple as that. I just do my attack I know can lead to a counter hit. And I just put both special moves in and I always get the better of the two choices. So now let's move on to a different example. So now here we have Faust. So Faust has an interesting move in down and kick in the air in that it's an air drill and it technically counts as a normal. So it is indeed special cancelable. So we can cancel and do special moves after this move connects on hit or on block. So what's useful about that is this. Uh, some of its pressure is he can go right into the drill and directly into the bag bomb. So he just kind of forces you to block it and then just pressure you from there. Now, indeed, some characters can deal with it, but it's not everybody, and sometimes their way of dealing with it isn't ideal. Like, say Kai is going to do his uppercut, right? 
Uh, that's all well and good, but in this particular scenario, like, you still trade, right? And that's if he did it frame perfect, like the bot. If you do anything less than frame perfect, well, then it's just not going to work out for you anyways. And that's Kai, and that's this specific scenario, right? A lot of characters got to kind of groove on it. But that's all well and good, but the thing is, this is nowhere near a natural combo, right? Like, that just isn't how it works. You don't get the combo off of it. But if you were to counter hit, now the bag bomb still wouldn't combo, but his mix move would combo. And you get a decent little chunk of damage, right? So you can just do this follow up, awesome. And now thanks to our option select once again, we're gonna get the best of both worlds. On block or on regular hit, we will get the bag bomb. And if it counter hits, we'll get that full combo with the mix move. So now, once again, the enemy is set here to random counter hit. Sometimes it'll counter, sometimes it won't. And due to this technique, I'll get the best of both options. So what I'm gonna be entering is this. I'm gonna do my drill, and then just do quarter circle forward punch for the bag bomb, and another quarter circle forward, uh, and then slash for the mix move. And if I get my counter hit, I'll get the mix. If I don't get my counter hit, I'll get the bag bomb. So no counter hit, get the bag bomb, right? Got my counter hit, get my mix move. No counter hit, get the bag bomb. Get the bag bomb. Oh, got my mix move, right? And this also applies to like all sorts of various angles. You can hit them on the top of their head, or you can hit them like the absolute bottom of their shins. Either way, you always get the best of the two options. And yeah, it's just very handy. Uh, Faust, uh, he can, he needs damage wherever he can get it. So just off something as basic as this, you keep yourself relatively safe on block against most of the cast. And even Kai, if you hit him at the exact right angles, uh, his uppercut will still whiff. So it's all Faust's uh, benefit. And if you do get the counter hit, well, then you get that and you can go from there. And one more time, it's really as simple as this. Just do your drill, then immediately input quarter circle forward punch and then quarter circle forward slash. And whichever it is, you get the best of the two options. Okay, now we're gonna get a little more complex. So it's the same basic concept, but now we're gonna mix in between a special move and a super move. And we're gonna use Giovanna for our example here. Now for Giovanna, her basic poke structure is this. You do your stand heavy kick, which is very good range, pretty decent poke. And generally you go do quarter circle back and kick, which is like your dog lariat or whatever you wanna call it, right? And it's a natural combo on hit, it's safe on block. Uh, like, it's everything you needed to be, right? And if you get the counter hit, well, then, like, well, it's the same deal, but you get a couple more points of damage. Uh, but what if instead we could get not only this move here, but if we get the counter hit, we could get a super instead. And, yeah, that's a good chunk of damage, right? So how are we going to do that? So our dog kick move here is quarter circle back kick. And our super move is half circle back, forward, heavy slash. So we're gonna be abusing the input buffer as we call it. So those are two different motions, right? Just quarter circle back kick and half circle forward and uh, heavy slash for the super. But you know, if we think about it critically for a second, well, quarter circle back, you know, down to down back to back, right? Half circle back has that motion anyways. So like if we do half circle back, we get the dog kick no matter what. Like it's just it's adding an extra layer, sure, but we get the same basic move. So how about when we're fishing for that counter hit, we do that motion for the dog, and then we hit forward and heavy slash. Well, it's gonna be interesting. So now once again, the enemy is set to random counter. I do not know if they're gonna be a regular hit or a counter hit. Whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be completely random. So what I'm going to be doing is this. I'm going to be doing my stand heavy kick, my poke. And then I'm going to be going half circle back kick, forward heavy slash. So the input buffer will read the half circle back kick as the regular quarter circle back kick on regular hit. And if there's any screen stop due to the uh, counter hit, the forward and heavy slash will then be the most recent input. And I'll read that. And since we already had the half circle back in there, it'll read that as the super input. So let's see how it works in a live fire situation. All right, no counter hit, regular dog slap. Oh, we got our uh, counter hit. Boom, you just lost half your life. Oh, and I guess a wall break too, more than half your life, right? 
So yeah, wow. And once again, we'll just keep at it here. Dog Lariat. Oh, we get a super instead because of the counter hit. And this is really basic. It's, once again, this is 90% of the motion here. Just half circle back kick. And then I'm just hitting forward heavy slash right afterwards. Now, one thing to note here, I guess, is... You don't want to hit forward and uh, heavy slash immediately as fast as possible. The tiniest delay will work for you. Uh, the thing is, if you do it too quick, that's going to happen. And uh, you'll just overwrite the input right away. You don't want that. Give it a little space to breathe. And when you do that, then, well, world's your oyster, really. Once again, you just always get the best of the two options. Simple as that. And that is the counter hit option select in Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, I've showed you three examples and trust me, this is hardly, hardly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. And this is one of those deals where make the game work for you. You know, work smarter, not harder, right? There is plenty of situations where you can combo into safe special move and on hit, you can go right into a super move. That's our Javana example. And there's a million myriad of possibilities that simply put, I don't think of right now. I'm sure they're there. I just don't think of them. If you found one out, post it in the comments below, I guess. But yeah, man, like this is an important technique. I think you should definitely keep in mind for Guilty Gear's drive. That all said, my friends, I guess that's the end of the video. So hit training mode, try it out for yourself. I think once you get the hang of it, you will definitely like it. And other than that, that's it for me. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Guilty Gear.